Yay. Ugh. Darned kids mess with everything and they've been messing clearly with this. I had this all set up earlier. Ugh. Way better. Make sure we're going live over here. Gonna give everybody just a minute to tune in while I contemplate playing the where are my glasses game. Because I really don't know where they are now. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. It looks like I'm live. I'm never quite sure. Hi, okay, I've got two viewers. Mm. Hi, welcome. This is Coach MK. Sorry, it's a little, a little different speed tonight because I don't know if you can hear me. I don't have much of a voice. The good news is with uh, having less of a voice, the baby's more likely to sleep. <clears throat> the bad news is not having much of a voice um, and not having a microphone that works with uh, my, my Twitch stream, this could be really hard to hear. But uh, while we're talking about things that are hard to hear, I wanted to take a minute for all of my clients in another Mother Runners Train Like a Mother Club um, to say I'm really, really sorry about the news you received today. Um, that was This was truly one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. And, um, I, it, and unfortunately, it's just one I'm going to have to stand by. So I, I, all the people that have reached out and uh, asked about one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'm not taking on any one-on-one -on -one clients right now. Everything, uh, every word that I wrote there, I totally meant. There's no hidden agenda. There's no crazy drama. It's, I mean, well, there is crazy drama, but it's in my life. Uh, it's no, it's no secret that I have a special needs child, and uh, his needs are accelerating, and so are mine. So while I take a big step back from this wonderful community of people that I love to coach and love, I'm not disappearing. So if you're here watching this, here are the things you need to know. I'm still in the month. I'm still going to be coaching. I'm still working. Like, nothing is really changing between now and December the 31st. Um, if you have trained with me in the past and we're thinking of coming back next year and you're a little perturbed by all of this... Um, yeah, I love you guys so much. You have no idea. And I wanted you to hear in my own frog voice saying this, <laughs> even though I sound terrible. I thought it was important for you guys to have some assurances from me about, uh, you know, what's going on. Nothing in, in life is changing from now till December 31st. If there are, and, and we're still going to have November plans, I think you can still get into them. I know we haven't shut that down yet. Um, and then we'll, after that, there'll be December, but that's pretty much going to be the only way to work with me. Um, for at least the next eight weeks. So within those next eight weeks, if you were thinking about coming back, if you have ideas about next year, I, I'm sorry I can't give you like a six month timeline or plan. All I can say is this, hey, the monthlies are where it's at. It's a great place to be. It is a good use of your time. Uh, and I can't stress that enough. It is a good use of your time to come work with me uh, in, the, in, in November, if you can, in December, if you are able. Um, I, I get that a lot of you guys want to do stride and that's totally cool. My program is set up differently um, and there's no good reason, at least as I see it, that you can't do both. Stride is a really, really fun, awesome program, but it's set up is totally different than mine and its aims are totally different than mine. Um, and we could easily sync them together if you wanted to continue working with me for the for the final month of, with Coach MK. Um, yay, you know, I guys, I, I love you so much too. I love you so much too. I really, really do. This has been this has been terrible. But there, I'm. But like I said, I'm not the I'm not dead, uh, and that's the the great thing about uh, about the this these days. Um, you can listen to my micro podcast. I started that for my private clients because they were starting to feel unloved a while ago, and they've been. I I since getting back on Twitch and since I've been recording that micro podcast. Um, I've really reconnected with why I started doing this in the first place. And not that I ever forgot it because I love you guys so much, but there's, it's very, very different to stand for you to see me and hear me and, and really feel what I'm saying versus, you know, Facebook where, which is really, really easy to miscommunicate. Like I, 
unless you've conversed with me in, in uh, written terms a lot or have interacted with me a lot, uh, it can be really hard to see uh, it can be really hard to see something that I read or if you're in a sensitive moment to see something that I wrote and think like, you know, jump to the worst case scenario and, and get really hurt. And that, that happens frequently. And I get it. This is an emotional connection that we have. And I want to retain that connection as much as possible. And I really want to nurture it. Um, but, you know, I'm, I, it, it's just really hard to do via Facebook. And I would rather answer questions here where there's no question about what I mean. And there's no question about you know, what I think, and that I'm not sugarcoating things, because you know me, I don't do that. Um, might drop a few more F-bombs here and there, but I'm never going to apologize for that. <laughs> Yay! Um, so, know this. Hi! Yay, no. Yeah, there's the morning mantra. Thank you. I'm hoping to be on iTunes soon. That's the last one I'm waiting on. I think Stitcher approved me yesterday. Um, I'm on CastBox. I'm on, I'm on, I've been approved by, like, 30 different, not 30, nine different medium I've never heard of before for podcast delivery. Um, but when iTunes becomes a thing, I'll let you know. That one I still continue to do. The way, and, and the podcast, that came around kind of kind of naturally because, as I said, the good thing about a really bad month, and uh, if you've paid any attention to me in October, you know it was a really bad month for me. I was very, very open about it. Um, the good thing about that month was finding this medium and remembering what it is I love about coaching and what it is I love about doing what I do and how I want to connect with people too. Um, and I, I'm not convinced that connection is going to end. It, it just might change. So for the foreseeable future, I'm still going to have that micro podcast. And um, I, I initially started it for my local clients that I don't ever get to see anymore because it's, it's really hard to leave the house, especially on Wednesday night. I'm never going to make it to track on a Wednesday night again. And that's been a really, really hard thing to accept. Um, so my way of staying connected to them and, you know, I've wanted to be there on Saturday mornings for the long runs because those are my two days a week to see them. And that's been really hard to do being in bed for a year with the busted body from a baby and a dislocated shoulder and a bulging disc in my neck and all of the things that have happened. Oh, thank you again. Look at you, Suze. You're always on top of it. Um, so yeah, that the, the, I started the micro podcast because I remember, if you remember back to the very first podcast I did with Demony and Sarah in April of 2016, I said, I remember saying to them that I realized that there was a need for what I brought to the table, even though I'm not the coachiest coach, right? I'm not, I'm not Steve Magnus. I'm not Jay Johnson. I never will be. I'm not an Olympian. I'm not a former Olympian. I don't train Olympians. Um, I've worked with one former Olympian and that was fantastic. That was a really good learning experience. But what it kind of comes down to, um, I remember looking around that track at these, this ragtag group of, group of adults back in, um, April of 2014, right, that's how long ago that was, sorry, April 2015, rather, and thinking to myself, God, I'm the only person in these people's lives that, that is telling them that they're okay, that they're not just okay, they're good, and they're not behind, and they're not losing, and they're not losers, and whatever that worst case scenario thought that they keep going back to in their head that's there, like, whatever it is you had, you still got it. And you're okay, and you're coached, and you're loved, and you're winning at life, and I swear to I swear to God, if you don't believe me, I'm going to make you do burpees till you can't argue with me anymore. And having that, the ability to do that was so cool and so amazing. And that's kind of what I wanted to get back to with the micro podcast. I mean, if you read uh, on the AMR blog the story about my private client, not my private client, she was, it, there's a difference. So there are people I train one-on-one, -on -one and there are people that came to the track with, with the big local group training I used to do. And Dove was part of that big local group training. And I love her. And when I realized back in June that, like, how much she needed my voice in her head, and I w was like, gosh, and I haven't been putting it there. Uh, that's what sprung the micro podcast. It was not like a first step in a series of things that would take me away. It was more like a first step in a series of things that was intended to keep everyone that wanted a little more MK, an easy way for them to get it, an easy way for me, right? And that's the hard thing about this. Like these, these, these programs are fantastic, but as the needs of my family are growing and changing, I don't know, I don't know what the bet, what the, what the best solution is. And the only way I'm going to figure it out is if I keep doing the things that I'm doing anyway, the things that I love, the things that I'm willing to do for free, um, the things that I'm happy to do uh, on my own demand and not at the command of someone that's put cash money down. And, uh, and uh, not that I'm opposed to cash money, but, you know, there's a difference. There's a difference. It's, a, it's the difference is a series of, is, a, is the ability for me to kind of control the output. So 
in the short term, I will, I'm will. i definitely going to continue to produce that micro podcast. So if you need, need just that little jolt of confidence first thing in the morning before, you, before the coffee's ready, cool. It will be there. Uh, I'm going to try to do it. Seven days a week. I can't promise there'll always be seven, but I'll do like I. I'm gonna record one tonight, but last night and the night before, I just did not have the voice, and uh, my hands were full of kids. So, um, yeah. So the the micro, the two links are posted here in the chat. If you guys can, if you can switch screens, I know if you're watching me on a mobile, it's hard to see. Um, but in the chat, there are two links. You can if you just search for the morning mantra with Coach MK. Um, it's right now it's available on Stitcher, it's available on Overcast, it's available on Podbox, it's, uh, which I've never heard of. The only medium I'm, I'm familiar with uh, are Spotify and Stitcher, and it should be available on iTunes relatively soon, but they have a, they have a backlog. So I'll, when that gets there, I'll let you all know, I promise. So this is not like some well-thought-out plan. Um, the micro-podcast, that's literally where it came from back in June when I was like, I need... I, I'm not staying, I'm, uh, you can only be excellent at one thing at a time, and right now I'm failing at a lot of things, and I need to get my, my, my act together uh, as quickly as possible. There are people that love me and miss me, and I don't know how to reconnect with them, and there's my family whose um, needs are, are changing. My son, right now, he has, God, close to 14 hours a week of therapy, and we got six months left before he's, he's got to be kindergarten ready in six months, or we're going to have to put him in a private school, which I don't want to do, and I'm, uh, people have told me what IEP struggles look like, and I, you know, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other, because you, you, it's hard to absorb in that moment that all of this negative energy that's coming your way, and all of this warning of this terrible thing that you will have to deal with in the future, it's just easier not to think about it and deal with each day-to-day -day challenge of having a special needs child. Let's see, let's see what we can do now to put that, put off that scenario to make sure that worst case scenario never materializes. All the while cheerleading people through this micro podcast, which is basically the same sort of cheerleading that I need every once in a while. So yeah, I go back and I listen to those over and over again too because, you know, who doesn't need that shot of confidence? Remember, I went out to sit out to become the coach I wanted to hire. If there was another coach like me that talked like me, I would have hired them. I don't have it, y'all, so i got to be that coach for me as well right now. And for my husband. And it's hard. RJ is doing incredibly well. Incredibly well. Like, he's made from, I remember they told me he would never, he would probably never speak. Never to expect eye contact and to get over the need to be told that I'm loved. Because... You know, I need to be bigger than that and I need to be above that because it might not come from my kid and I need to figure myself out. And I remember hearing that in that moment. It was so harsh and it made me so angry to hear that from a psychiatrist who wasn't, by the way, I'm not, I'm not criticizing her. She was giving me the best advice she could and that's what America does right now. We, uh, we conflate tough love with, um, with, with shitty behavior basically. And we've been doing that for a very long time. Like this did not start recently. This has been going on for a while. Um, so, you know, she tried to give me some tough love in there, but you know, to be loved is a basic need. It's a human need. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not needy for ha because you have basic needs. And I had to remind myself of that too. And that's part of where you are coached, you are loved, you are winning at life came from. That was me talking to myself. True story. It was me talking to my clients, thinking if I could hear it back somewhere else, it would be okay if I never heard it from my son. And I do now, every day. He's in bed right now with a really bad cough waiting for me. And, um, <laughs> not really, because if, but he will get to watch more movie before I come up and join him, and it'll be an hour or two before I do anyway. But that's where you are coached, you are loved. You are coached because I would give them direction. You are loved because I kind of needed to hear hear that back. And I know how important it is for people to hear that. I need I know how important it is as an adult to have someone give a shit about you on even the most basic level. Cuz it's hard, right? You pay people, you stop paying them, they don't they go away and they don't come back. You ask for help and somebody will do it if it's convenient, but it's to 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 truly find love as an adult and hold on to it is a beautiful and rare thing that should always be beautiful but should never be rare. Um, so, and I, I intend to keep doing this in some form or fashion. I just don't know what that medium is going to be yet. For now, the one thing I can promise is a little micro podcast in your morning reminding you that you are coached and you are loved and you are winning at life. And for the next two months, 
while I gear up for the IEP fight of my life for my son, um, which is going to be really, really ugly and uh, uglier, way uglier than I had ever experienced. And trying to get gearing gearing up for that at the same time that I'm getting him ready to potentially start public school, which is something we never thought he passes for normal. He'd never know he was he was autistic. When uh, people have asked him before, you know you're art you you know you have autism, right? Which why the fuck you would say that to a child? I have no idea. People have said that to him, and he's like, he shrug. I need therapy. That's that's his response, and I love it. And I I. The good news about having that diagnosis was it opened up so many doors to so much treatment when he was younger. The bad news about that diagnosis is that it starts to close doors as you get older. And um, I'm getting ready to kick all those doors down and set them on fire if I have to. Because he wants to be wherever his sister is and he wants to be in that school with her. And I'm gonna, and if he can function in that school and the teacher's ready to work with it, I'm going to make sure he gets it. His life's going to be hard enough. With having, without having to be in a different special school away from his sister. Or having to explain to my sis, to his sister that she isn't special enough to go to the special school that RJ does. Because how do you grow up next to that? He's special and you're not. There's no nice way or easy way to have these complicated conversations with four children. Um, and I need to go fail a little bit with that in private before I come back and lead people publicly. So this is not... You know, just remember, I'm not, I'm, I'm not dead, not gone. We got monthlies for two more months, and I can't hint at it more strongly than that. Get in the monthlies if you're not there already. That's the best way to stay connected to me. Um, because, uh, cause like I said, I'm not trying to increase the one-on-one -on -one clients, and I'm not trying to. I'm trying to be fair to everybody, and I can't take your money until I know that I can be fair to everyone, too. So what I can keep doing for free is this foam rolling every night at 7 o'clock. And I'm going to try I'm not doing it today because I'm trying to let the baby sleep. And I don't have that much of a voice. And um, I will still be doing Ask the Coach. I will still be doing office hours. I will still be here in ways that you can see and touch me. I will still be available in the Facebook groups, um, though not quite as available as I was back in 2016. But I'll still be there. I appreciate all of your kind words. And know that you are never far from my mind. And I, you will never be too far away for me to coach, to continue to coach and love you. Okay? If you have any questions, feel free, at any, feel free to reach out at any time. But, um, again, the follow up, get my micro podcast. You've got my nuzzle newsletter. I'll probably still, I'm not going to stop reading anytime soon, so I'll keep making those once a week. Um, but between the micro podcast, the nuzzle newsletter, and, and this right here, this, this Twitch channel, which I, I will continue to broadcast on. Hopefully I'll get to do more strength during the day when we get to the point where the, the baby's either up a little bit more consistently or sleeping a little more consistently and my days are a little more consistent because right now they've been a, recently they've been a shit show, not going to lie. So yeah, that's it. I, um, there's no story I'm not telling, I'm not holding out on you guys and, you know, I don't know what, what the next steps are going to be, but I got to take a big step back from another mother runner before I can figure out what any next step forward is, is going to look like between now and then, you know, how to stay tethered to me, you know, where the monthly plans are, get in there. Um, and when later comes, as long as you're tethered to me in some form or fashion, I promise, uh, I'll, I'll let you know what later is and I'll let you know when later is. I just don't have a timeline yet. Okay. Um, no, I love you guys. RJ's a lucky kid. I think I'm lucky to have him, man. I love him so much. I love my kids so damn much. 18 Williams, 18, thank you. I try to be a good mom. I try to be. Um, Heather, you're kind. Thank you. I don't know if I'm doing anything right. I just try to be fair to everyone involved. Um, run vet mom. Love the connections you've created far beyond the workouts. I will continue to say the things you need to hear. That much is not going to stop. That responsibility that I felt on the track in 2014, 2015 has not shifted, changed, or gone away. So I will, um, I might not be doing what I've been doing before, but I'll be loving everyone again. It's going to happen. If you want to be loved by me, I'll be here for you. I love you too. I'm Elena Thray. I love you more. More. 
more than you can possibly imagine. It is. Thank you. I try to be an amazing advocate. We'll see how good I am when uh, when uh, when I when the pressure is on and I'm standing in front of people. I can run with Texas. I'm gonna run with. I've run with y'all in my heart every day. Y'all are you. Y'all have changed my life in the best possible way. To think that I never intended for this to be a career. I really didn't. I just got pissed off because I couldn't find a coach that I wanted to work with or one that I thought had like the basic understanding of, you know, what the rest of a body with the that just happened to have a vagina would function. Because um, who knew that'd be such a tall order, but but I couldn't. So I set out to become the coach I wanted to hire, and then one thing led to another, and it's just been snowballing in such a beautiful way, beautiful way, ways I never could have foreseen none of this was part of some master plan and that's probably why I got to where I am right now that uh you know if I'd had some like really crystal clear five-year vision um maybe maybe not I'm not truly worried about it I don't look backwards that way it has been a truly incredible ride um and I'm grateful for every one of you and I'm grateful for every minute of this and I'm grateful for every second it has been such an honor to coach and love you and if you want a little more MK you can get a, I'm, I'm going to keep producing some things in the interim that, uh, that I've been doing anyway. So, um, hopefully by now, or you, and if you aren't aware yet of the, the there's a, a Bammer HRT alumni group. I'm not actually part of it. Um, I knew this was started at the end of the first round of heart rate training programs that we did, um, by a participant that wanted to keep the group together. And my feeling on it was like, uh, my time, again, it's not about the money, but it, it, I'm already in Facebook so much. If I was added to that group, number one, it would be hard not to accidentally get in it. And then if I'm in there and people can see that I've seen their comment and I've not responded, then I've heard a feeling. Um, but I had to prioritize the people that were, that were the participants in these other programs that had races coming up and felt a lot of pressure for no good reason. And that, by the way, had paid for my time and felt like they owed, like they owned a piece of it. Um, which is fair. They did, and they do. Um, and I also thought that was, so that's number one, and, and uh, why I didn't jump into it. And number two, I also thought it was important for you guys to have a place to talk to each other away from me. Um, the only way I'm ever going to get honest feedback is if you guys are talking to each other, if you're working things out, if you're, if you have a safe space to go say, like, you know, what the fuck did she think today? Like, what was she thinking? That was terrible. This was, did anyone else get this? Because I didn't get it. It's a place for you to go talk about what you're doing and not be watched by, by the coach, by mom. You know, I just, sometimes you just want to go to your sister's room and talk to her and bitch about how bad mom is. That's great. That's why I kind of, I know that it exists, but I'm not in there. But everyone that I've ever worked with and with some form or fashion has kind of migrated into that group. If you're interested in joining it, um, ask Julie winkler Patno or Tamara Payton. I think they're the two administrators. I don't even know what the name of it is. Um, Susan, if you're still watching, uh, and you better be because I'm going to get to strength in a few minutes. If you happen to have the link or the name of that Facebook group, if you want to throw it in the chat, that's cool. Because I did get a bunch of private messages about it, and I'm like, sorry guys, I'm not in there. I don't know. I know that it exists, but I specifically don't know where it is for that reason. I was just to be a... It's important to have somewhere to go. It's important to be able to find me when you need me, and it's important to be able to talk about me when you don't. You want the newsletter, um, Liz F2005? The easiest way to get it um, there is to, if you go here in Twitch, if you click on the info button for my channel, um, and there's a picture of me running the Philadelphia Marathon, that lovely, lovely photo that Dimity took in November 2016. If you click on that, that redirects to my Nuzzle newsletter, and you can subscribe there. Um, if not, um, we can we can uh, you can always email me mk at anothermotherrunner.com. That's going to be my email address at least until Christmas. If you want to get on, then I can e if you you can just email me, and I can put the link in there. Um, tag me in the groups. I can put it in. I can put it in there too. Um, if you ask for it. Um, Coached and loved. I love you so much, MK Texas. 
I'm Kyle Runners. I never ever want to say goodbye to you. You've changed me in so many ways. Thank you and hugs. Thank you. Y'all, like, you seriously don't know. You've changed my life. Uh, d -Ray. Yeah, I'll, I appreciate the prayers. I really do. RJ's doing great. He's way further ahead than I ever thought he would be. Um, and I have no idea how I'm going to convince a bunch of bureaucrats that, you know, don't know my son of that. But um, it's going to start started today. We had all the prep and then the, the testing and the retesting starts tomorrow. Yay! I'm going to have to have my attorneys there for every dang bit of it. I'm not excited about that. So if I'm out of touch for the next two weeks, that's what I'm doing. We have to get an ass ton, like a literal, I think the scientific term is like a metric ass ton of paperwork done by December the 1st. And we have to get him retested by every single specialist that's ever seen him and worked with him. Um, get them to sign off about where he is and his progress and then have the, the I, I, everyone I've ever worked with or everyone that I've spoken with on this autism journey has said anything you do anytime you're sitting with the school official I don't care there's no such thing as an unofficial capacity when you have a special needs child make that attorney be there with you thank God we can afford it I mean what if we couldn't gee that's terrifying so um for the next two weeks I'm probably I'm gonna be walking like about three steps behind my attorney going <sighs> waiting for you know letting him press the buttons that need to be pressed so I can get my kid what he needs um, Die Hiker, you're amazing. I've learned so much in the short time I've been coached and loved. I hope what the main, the most important thing I hope you guys have learned is that you're not done unless you want to be. You have no idea what you're capable of. And anyone that ever told you that, uh, they, they, they just wrong. They're wrong. Anyone that told you anything other than that just didn't have the time or the interest. It wasn't actually about you. It wasn't an objective assessment of who you are. So if there's anything that you've learned, I hope it's that. You're fucking amazing and you deserve to be coached and loved and you've been winning at life even in those moments when you don't feel like you're coached and loved I Caramba, Texas you're not sure if you're doing anything well doing a lot very well you're kind you get to choose where you put your talent and energy you know what I would rather give my time and energy to people that speak to me this way and that's why this was so hard because I know so many of you love me back so strongly um no idea I could form a connection with the coach I never saw in person. I didn't know this was possible. You mean so much to me. And I wish you and your family all the best. I look forward to training with you again when you're ready. Thank you. And I promise I'll let you guys know when I am. But we're not done. We still got work to do. Between now and Christmas, we got work to do. DRE27, uh, I've been saddened in tears since reading the emails. I've been saddened in tears since Monday night. That's why my voice hasn't recovered yet. It's like every time I get a little bit better, I cry and blow my nose and cough. And it all goes to hell all over again. There are several bootleg Pammer groups. Oh, my God, I had no idea. I thought there was one that they started after that first round of HRT. Um, okay. Well, the ones, that I'll, to repeat, the ones that I'm aware of, uh, you can go ahead and join them. Uh, we're started or are managed by either Julie Winkler Patno or Tamara Payton. Um, sorry, done. I'm not done. I'll probably always be coached love by you. I'll be ready at some point. And when I am, I'll, I promise I'll communicate it. I just don't want to make promises I can't keep. And that's what the other reason I have to step away. Uh, it's hard to keep a job when you can't tell them how long you're going to be, how long you're going to be gone. It gets awkward for everyone involved. If I could make the December monthly so hard. <laughs> Funny enough, the December monthly was already made before this decision came out so quickly. Um, so yeah, it it is it is mutually exclusive, um, and uh, of, of how much I want you to miss me. I, I did this thinking. When you read it, when you get it, and you read it, you'll see what I was thinking. I'm pretty clear in there. It's good. It's better than November. I think the monthlies get better every single month. And here's the, the final sales pitch, even though, you know, I, uh, there's a lot of the commentary I got from people today and it's hard to respond to. They're like, well, what am I supposed to do in the spring? Um, I can't answer that yet, but I can tell you this. If you stop now, it'll be that much harder to pick it up in the spring. If you don't know what to do, get in the monthlies, get in the monthlies. 
I can't say, again, I can't hit more strongly than that. I can't tell you anything beyond that, but get in the monthlies. That is your best chance of staying tethered to me, at least in the short term. Um, and it's, uh, it, it is always the best that I have to offer. You don't truly need 20 weeks to get ready for a marathon. You don't truly need 12 weeks even to get ready for a half. What most of those plans, all of those plans that were ever written were predicated upon was the understanding of the way the world used to work for runners. You had people that jogged for health for decades, right? When you go back and read all those old ass books I told y'all to buy that you probably can't get anymore on Amazon.com like Jogging by Bill Bowerman or um, Kenneth, Dr. Kenneth Cooper of the Cooper Institute in Atlanta now. Um, what? Well, it's eluding me. I've been crying too much. I'm not thinking straight. But yes, you should de-read. I would if I were you. Go ahead and buy the December monthly, um, and and we'll figure it out. We'll go there. Um, everyone should get the December monthly. It's that good. Um, but yeah, so if you go back and read any of those old books that uh, that I about, you know, and I, and I know I sound like a really old woman when I'm talking about the history and the evolution, but what you see now, the things that are written now, where the industry is now, what they're selling you now is based off an outdated idea. Back then, when jogging became this craze that was sweeping the nation in the 70s and the American Heart Association started setting guidelines for heart health, the common knowledge was you run 30 minutes a day or three miles a day, four or five days a week. And most people who jogged, that's exactly what they did. Go back and look. Like, they were, ne they were fit, they were healthy, but they sure, they weren't race ready. And it didn't matter because there weren't that many races. There weren't that many 5Ks. There weren't that many 10Ks. There were, you've heard me talk in the past about how few marathons and halves there were. None of that's bull. It's true. Um, so you needed 16 to go from running three or four days a week, three miles a day, to go to a half or a full. Yeah, you needed a long time to make that. That's a huge jump in mileage. When you run the way that I run, the way that I ask you to run in the monthlies, you have a lot of options because you're doing a lot and you're going to get really fit and the community's fun. So you're going to do the strength and with no pressure on and it's just fun, the incentives change. So instead of being worried about what's going to happen if you miss a run, you get excited to think about what you're going to be when you nail it. Hold on one second. That's my, that's my dinner. That's how sad I am, you guys. I ordered Indian food tonight. <laughs> you know it's bad when I'm ordering a sog paneer. That's my comfort food. But anyway, yeah, back 100 years ago when it was when the world was different, you needed that much of a ramp up. But if you stay in the monthlies and you, I kind of don't care what your goal is, right? Because you can have all the options. You want to lose weight? Great. We're moving and we're getting stronger. You want to get faster at the marathon? Amazing. Guess what? All you need to do is not stop. What we're entering right now is a period of the year, and I'm going to end on this thought, and I want that, if if there's any part of me that's like, I don't see why the monthly is is the, the, the my best next step, let this story ring in your ears. We used to call it doping season. You got racing season. Yeah, awesome. You got good taste, MK Texas. Yay. Um, we used to call it doping season. So first you have racing season. And then when, right, because this is back, again, I'm old as fuck, right? So this is like 20 years ago, 1996, 97, 98, not that many races, maybe four local ones that you still had to drive to each year in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, and uh, so after, after the race would be run, the jokes would start about doping, because doping has been around since the 70s, but it wasn't something runners typically did. Sprinters did, because you doping at the time uh, was considered a cheated a way of cheating to get more muscle mass in a short period of time doping has evolved now 
it's cheating because it extends the, your body's physical limitations a little bit further. Um, and one could argue, and I wouldn't disagree with this argument at all, that doping now, as opposed to anabolic steroids then, doping now with EPO, it's, it's, it doesn't negate the work that you do. It allows you to work more. So um, you can understand the perverse incentives that make people do it. But I digress. Um, back then, doping, even in the 90s, it was still anabolic steroids and bulking up as much as possible. And runners, generally speaking, didn't do it. Um, but there was one group of runners that did, and I'm not going to name the country. But to this day, there's a question mark around what they do, as much as we want to celebrate them. And here's why. When you talk about what the way uh, the International Olympic Committee works, the way WADA works, um, they test you before, if you're in the professional corral. They test you when you show up. They test you at the end of the race uh, for, 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 for blood and in urine, depending on the race, one or other, sometimes both. Um, imagine that, how much has got, that got to suck. Like, you're exhausted, and they're like, we need you to pee in this cup before you go, before you take one step further. And this, is, this happens on the Olympic level as well. And it's testing, because they're testing at that moment for the presence of the drug. The problem was, that's not when this country was doping. They were doping in the off-season. So if you've ever heard me say a strong fall is built uh, in the winter, that's what I mean. Doping season starts the, right after racing season ends because no one's being tested during that period. So when I think when I designed Heart Rate 102 Bag of Speed, that's what I was thinking of. I was thinking of all the, the runners that I knew that came from this one particular country that would go hide for a period of time and come back really strong, shockingly strong. How strong can you reasonably get in 12 weeks? They would exceed that limitation, and they continue to do so till this day. It's also when you look at the, the timing of which races uh, globally became the big races, uh, there's, a, there's a doping season uh, that's year-round right now, where when, uh, outside that buildup to a big race, you go and you do whatever you have to do to get as strong as possible in that short period of time. So I'm not advocating doping. What, what the fuck am I talking about? What I'm talking about is this is not the period to quit. This is the period to keep going without pressure and go get as strong as possible. Because what we do now is going to inform what you are able to do and the options that you have later. And nothing, nothing, nothing will give you more options than the monthly plan. If there was something as good or better out there, I would tell you to do it. Yay. And I, and then I say this yet, not knowing um, what AMR is going to bring to the table next or who they're going to hire next. Uh, I won't be part of that decision-making process. Obviously, I'm a contractor. So, um, yeah. That's pretty much all I had to say. Just wanted to make sure you guys knew, like, heard it from my mouth. This is my decision. It's about me. It's about the complications in my life. You will never be loved less. Might be coached a little bit less in the interim if you choose to be, but I'm here. I'm on Twitch. I got the podcast. I've still got the monthlies. As long as I'm in the monthlies, why aren't you? Yay! And the other thing we have going on is this little thing called Three Days at the Fair. Yay! Sorry, you guys. It's been a crazy couple weeks. I'm going to. Susan, are you still here? Susan, are you still here? Oh, uh, how do I. I'm going to. Yes, okay. Never mind. Susan, I am. Stream marker. Oh my god, y'all. Mom's on the Twitch. Mom's on the Twitch. Here we go. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about three days at the fair. So if you're training with me for three days at the fair, um, I've been stepping back for a bit. Yay! <laughs> a highlight. I can't do that. Can I add a highlight? Why are you... I'm so... I figure out, mention Susan, and now you're like asking me to do something more complicated. I'm, why can't you just be proud of what I know how to do, Susan? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> well, that's the fun thing. Here, we don't do speed work in the off season. It's not how it works. It never was. That's why guys, guys think you're crazy when all you talk about speed work. Um, that's not when you do speed work, and that's not why you do speed work. The notion of what you of what of what uh, speed work is for is um, it's incorrect, and most of us don't need it. We really don't. You will get faster um, by doing what I tell you to do. But if you really, really, really want to go run faster on the track, that's great. It's gonna make you tired. It's gonna hurt. And if that's what you want to do, is get tired and hurt, great. Go with God. I can punch you in the face when you're done. That'll make you hurt. <laughs> um, but. 
Other than, why would you want that? I don't know. I guess the same reason you want some track intervals. But um, am I winning at Twitch? Yay, me. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, so doping for the next race, or you could just do some strength. You could just, we could all just do some strength. It's crazy. Speaking of strength, um, it's not speed work. Mm -mm. Isn't that funny? And again, I say that lovingly. Speed work, speed development. Um, no. It's just harder than easy effort running. It's not specific speed development. And if you were to show this to like a, a super coachy coach, like a proper coach, like a coach that thinks they know what they're doing, they just look at him and be like, this is a mess. And he wouldn't be wrong. They just look at the world a little bit differently than I do and they don't understand my clients. So now, I'm not going to put you in a position to do true speed work in my sense of speed work until you're truly ready for it and you're in a position where you're not going to get hurt. Because it will make you hurt before it makes you faster. It's super risky. It's a risk that we take, and the reason we don't do speed work in the off-season is precisely that. If you get hurt, what's it for? It's true speed work, even for a very strong person, comes with a very, 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 very high probability of injury. It's why Jordan Hesse had to pull out a few weeks before Chicago. Weeks. She was entering her speed phase, sharpening up for the race. It's why... Um, Oh, what was her name? Who pulled out of New York? There were three three runners pulled out of New York. Amy Crabb dropped down to the 5K. That's why. Um, she could get through that and keep uh, with, with, her, with her injury. It's why Shalane nearly dropped out of New York, that knee injury. And the knee injury was came four weeks before the race. Why? That's when you do speed work, the sharpening work, the, the really trying to break through. So all that just to say, no, dust bath is not even close to speed work. It's just really hard. It's terrible. It'll make you strong, but it's not speed work or speed development. That's not what it's there for. Yay! Now, for real, for real though, for real though, workout. I'm probably going to get this wrong too. Bear with me. Okay. This series that we're about to do is called God Hates Julie. And let me see. Okay, and this is where I start to fall apart. Hey, Martini Monsters, welcome back. I missed you. It's been a rough couple weeks. Yay! No, I'm going to do something new, Martini Monsters. The people that I are I'm expecting to do this next routine, it's a step up from the last one. Um, but the people I'm expecting to do this routine, they're the crazy people I was telling you about. They're getting ready to do that race, that 50-mile race on a one-mile paved loop. And even your boyfriend was like, ah. I'm like, I know. They're worse than speed cyclists like he used to be. So here's what we're going to do. Um, for everyone doing three days at the fair, everyone that I'm coaching for the 50-miler, you know who you are. Um, I need you to perform this routine in its totality, because I've already been talking longer than I need to, and I'm going to have to go upstairs with my kids in a few minutes. Um, I will do this with you tomorrow. For now, I'm going to show you the moves, and I'm going to ask that you do it and either post it to Twitch, I don't really care, or put it in the private Coach and Love Strength group. That's fine, too. Um, all I need is a video showing me that you get it and you can do it, because here's the rub. God hates Julie. She's going to have to actually do this because she's already far ahead of where you're at. Um, you guys are coming back to me after a little time off, and I just need to gauge where you're at. If you can make it through this whole routine, we're, we're just going to put you on Julie's page and push forward. If you're not on Julie's page, that's fine. We're going to back up a little bit, hammer down the basics. I'm going to continue to beat, beat up Julie with both of my fists and be like a little, just have you under my elbows. All right. Yay. I love Jesus. concept. Yeah, let, let this chase you in your dreams, Julie. Alright, so here is what we're going to do. I can't find. Nope.
about right. Okay. We're going real super duper classy with this one because I can't find my hand weights. I weighed these earlier. They're both about five pounds. So, number one, I want you near a chair while you do this. I do not want you leaning against a wall. I do not want you sitting, but you're going to start from a seated position. You're going to pull that big toe up off the ground, press the Press the pinky toe in, no sickling of the feet, right? I don't know if you can see this in the screen, but if that ball of your foot comes off the ground, you're doing it wrong. You drive the ball of your foot into the ground and you balance with that pinky toe. You're gonna rise just a little bit off that seat with that band around your ankles. Can you see my ankles? I don't think you can. Try this again. It's getting real, you guys. It's getting real, real. I need my glasses. Here we go. All right, booty just a little bit over that chair. Start with your hands on your hips. Big toe up, baby monsters. And this is not a big move. I know this also isn't new. Baby monsters on your left foot for one minute. Shifting, make sure that booty's locked and you're not over relying on your quad here. Baby monster to the left. When you've been doing that, if you can get all the way through without stopping, here's the next level. <laughs> Take your heels off the ground. Stay in that huddle position. One minute to the left. Keeping that heel off the ground. One minute to the right. If that's too easy, I want you to go get three pound weights no more than five. You're going to do rows with each step. Make sure when you're doing those rows that you feel your lats engaging. You should feel all of this engage all the way down to your obliques. Yay! So that's what that looks like. So it's hella squatting. Hella, hella, hella squatting. Julie, I just want you to practice this because you're going to have to start these pretty much this weekend. I don't think I put in your training picks because I didn't want to scare you. You've been doing so well and you've been so patient. Plus, Thanksgiving's coming up. And if you decided, hey, fuck all of this, I'm going to, I would rather die in the wilderness than go home. You have, you have a way to die in the wilderness. Yay, you! It's easy. Yeah, everything looks easy till you try it for a minute. So, right, poor Julie. God bless Julie. All of y'all are welcome to try it. It's one of the reasons I'm not that worried about you about getting their hands on one of my plans. You will never execute it if you aren't part of the training program that is suffering together. Yay! So, you can use two turkeys and little frying pans. You could, but my fear is. Those things are really dense, and I've got small children under my feet most of the time, and some of these women do too. So, you could use a toddler, but I'd rather you didn't. Oh my god. I could use baby Violet, but I don't think she would appreciate it very much. Um, so yeah, it is terrible. It's so terrible. What are you use the heaviest for but Yeah, I'm really, I'm really using them. I love that, Susan. You're like, oh my god, you're really using them? Yes. Yes, and that's how. Rowing. Rowing is always good, and there are two reasons why the row is so positive, and then um, if y'all have any more questions, feel free to toss them in the chat. But the reason that the rowing is so important, especially for my ultra runners, um, and by the way, Every, in, in case you've ever wondered, the, 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 the strength that is added to the runs in any plan is intentional. It's not haphazard at all. If you ask me, like, why is this here and how does this work, I'm happy to tell you. But I promise, there's a reason. Never assume that, like, I just didn't get, you know, yes, I get really creative now that I have this medium. It was hard, right? Previously, I had to, like, what can I show you in a picture and with words to get a concept and a movement across? Now I can just show you, and I can make you do really crazy shit, and we're going to do that in November and December. Yay! 
Um, but the thing that I'm concerned about most of all from an ultra runners, less so for anyone running less of a distance, um, but when you're running an ultra, those tend to start at 50k. So think about how long it would take you to run a marathon. Double that, add two hours, and that's your 50 mile time. For most people, that's somewhere between 6 and 12 hours. That's a long time. And if your spine is used to sitting like this, leaning back like this, or even like sitting up straight with really good posture for most, most people, look something like that with the C in their spine. Now imagine going from this being your position most of the time to this being your position most of the time for at least 12 hours. That's where the breakdowns happen. So all of these moves as crazy as they seem. The reason I'm having y'all do this for me, if you're watching Melissa, uh, Susan, uh, Julie, and Kate, the biggest thing I'm looking for in this is number one, glute integrity, are they recruiting? It is very, very easy to get through that entire movement that I showed you if you stop and shake your legs out and only use your quads. If you can do all of that without stopping to shake your legs out, eventually your quads will, your glutes will recruit because your quads will fatigue to, to bits. So that's, that's how I rep you to fail without picking up a heavy weight. Um, I need to see how quickly your quads fail, uh, for one. Because if, they're hyper, if your glutes aren't recruiting and your quads are hypercompensating, I need, the, I need your quads to fail. Number two, I need to check for your ankle integrity. We need a hell lot of ankle strength, like a whole lot of ankle strength. Um, even though you're going to be running on flat ground, um, and you're not, we're not dealing with the, the crazy undulating terrain, um, ankles are the failure point for most runners who want to get faster. And that's another reason I laugh at speed work. People are like, I really want to do some speed. I'm like, what you need to do is get into a bar class, y'all. God. Um, because that ankle strength, I mean, I can give you links to it. We've got the scientific research that shows it. You're better off doing jump rope. No joke. Jump rope and bar class if you want to get faster. Because that, down in here, the first of two moves in the foam rolling routine is the most important thing you can do, the most important muscle you can work on if you want to get faster. It's this one right here. The one that controls all the tendons and ligaments that make your toes move. No joke. You got science to back it up. But if you want to do speed work, yay, go for it. I'm making my people do ankles. If with the work we do now to get your ankles really good and working, um, lessens the chances of them fatiguing later on. Um, also, if we're setting out for a run and you find that the middle toes, because this is also common with my ultra runners, if you find that your middle toes get a little numb, not cold necessarily, cold, I can deal with cold, cold's not as big a deal as people like to make it out to be, that's nutritional by the way, no you don't have rain odds, um, yeah I'm serious, um, if, if you feel some of that numbness going on in your toes, that, that's a sign that we need to work on your ankles some more too. So if that happens, tell me, let me know, or it could be a sign we need to change shoes because uh, if there's something going on that's impacting your ankle's ability to totally flex. So that is the what, that is the why. We'll get into the how. Show me what you got. Uh, if you can get to the point where you're doing this with a weight or a frying pan because you want to be cool like me, yay, go for it. Um, I just need to see what I'm working with when it comes to your ankles and how far back we need to jump before we start uh, pressing forward in a really big way. Can I skip speed if I take bar? <laughs> no. Sorry. You signed up for this, Suze. There we go. So... That is um, pretty much all I had to say, um, and that's all I had to say about that anyway. Um, and now I need to eat. I need to eat. Period. And then I need to go upstairs. But show me, show me your strength. Hashtag show me your strength. I uh, can't wait to see what you guys, um, what you guys come up with. And I really, really hope to see you in my monthly pro my monthly plans, my monthly programs um, for my final eight weeks with AMR. I love you guys so much. You're coached, you're loved, you're winning at life. I'm going to go preserve my voice for a little bit so I can, um, I can turn around and make a podcast. And Martini Monsters, if you're still watching, I would love to see you in Uber Cruiser try that strength series.